Brandon Ortega is already set to go for Wiley and Fort Stockton. How you doing, Brandon? What's up, Mike? Oh, what a beautiful night, uh, beautiful weather. We thought it was going to be a little colder here in Big Spring. Nonetheless, very excited to get the playoffs started with the Wiley Bulldogs. Going on Friday, so it's a home-and-home -home series. First at Stanford for Game 1 at 5, then right here on Saturday at noon for Game 2. From Rockfield on the campus of Hamlin High, Brandon Ortega, K-Texas Sports. Happy Sunday, sports fans. Sit back and get comfy on the couch. K-Texas Sports Sunday is on deck for the Bombers' second game of the regular season. Welcome to Sports Sunday. Brandon Ortega, Casey Kiernan, joined by Bombers head coach Joe Brandon. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. For golf fans, the Open Championship is that tournament you can always count on where the best golfers in the world struggle in the tough conditions across the pond. Third round teed off this morning. Miguel Jimenez, your leader to start the day. Little stretch and twist. Now sports with Brandon Ortega. Cowboy senior Taylor Huff. Emotional tribute to fallen cowboy Taylor Huff on senior day for Harden Simmons. Huff passed away less than a week ago after being struck by a car. The team honored Huff by sporting his number seven on their helmets and held his jersey in line for the pregame coin toss. Welcome back, sports fans. Thank you for joining us. The Cowboys' last hurrah of 2013 came down to the home finale this afternoon with Louisiana College. A victory would secure another winning season for the Cowboy faithful. Five and five entering the last game of the year. Pick it up on the opening drive for the Cowboys' rough start for Josh Christian. The senior threw two interceptions to begin the game, but the Wildcats only managed six points off those turnovers. Late in the first we go, Cowboys still without a point. Tevin Mitchell finds a seam, moves Harden Simmons across midfield. Mitchell finished the game with 169 yards and two scores in the game. Second quarter still 6-0 until Christian connects with a wide open. Trey Lewis, 23-yard score, gives HSU the lead right there, but this game would stay close deep into the fourth quarter. Louisiana College pulled away to win 46-34. Cowboys finished the season below 500 for the first time in over two decades. Across town, McMurray hosting Southern Nazarene in their final home game of the year, first, last home game of the year altogether. Early in the first no score, Nazarene's clone Kinsey up the middle, untouched. Crimson Storm take the early lead. Second quarter now, more from the running attack. Brian Yanor around the corner, 13-0 after the extra point is no good. Now the McMurray offense in desperate need of some momentum heading into the halftime break. Gabe Rodriguez finds David McHugh, 502 career yards for Rodriguez. That's a career high on the day. 38-7 run in the second half led McMurray to the 55-21 win today at Wilford Moore Stadium. They end the year at 3-8 overall. Abilene Christian ended their season with a dominant outing on the road at Prairie View A&M, just shy of 700 yards of offense. 65-45 the final. Quarterback John David Baker had five touchdowns in the game, and he has now set the school record for most touchdowns in a single season with 40. In the American Southwest Conference, Howard Payne drops their season finale to Texas Lutheran 63-14. The Yellow Jackets had only won four games in the last three years. They finished this season four and six overall. Plenty of big country high school football teams kicked off by district play into the weekend, including Tap Six Man, also today in the Key City, Abilene Christian High School, hosting Greenville Christian. First quarter we go, no score. Check out the moves by Sam I. Massaqua. Breaks about four tackles at midfield, works his way inside the Greenville five yard line. Massaqua opened the game with back to back touchdowns, and the Panthers go on to pull away from Greenville 60 to 14, your final. ACHS is just a few wins away now from their fourth straight trip to the state semifinals. More scores from today's high school football playoffs. Breckenridge in Class 2A ends their season at the hands of the Wall Hawks, 42-18. The Buckaroo season ends at 4-7. Class 1A Division 2, Hamlin. Outlast era out in Graham. Tyrone Johnson had himself a big day, which included a 95-yard touchdown run. The Pied Pipers are set to face San Angelo TLC a week from tonight in Clyde. That will be a 1 p.m. kickoff in that area round showdown. Texas Tech and fifth-ranked Baylor entered today's battle in Arlington, heading in different directions. Red Raiders, losers of their last three. Baylor, a perfect 8-0 on the year with a BCS Bowl within reach. The Bears out 
out dueled Tech in an extremely physical game. Bryce Petty's five touchdown passes led the Bears offensively. This win a bigger one for the Bears, especially since Stanford lost tonight on K Texas at USC. The Bears are guaranteed to at least move up one spot because of that loss in the BCS standings. Top 25 showdown out in Austin. Number 24, Texas hosting number 12, Oklahoma State. Scoreless game through the first five minutes. Then Clint Chelf gets a huge hole up the middle. 18-yard score puts the Cowboys on the board. Tied game into the second, 14-10 on second and eight. Cowboys get a break right here off the hands of a Longhorn. Tracy Moore benefits with the score. OK State took a 28-10 lead at the half. And the they kept things going after the break. Oklahoma State outscored the Horns 18 to three after halftime, and they go on to hand Texas their first loss in Big 12 play. Cowboys and Longhorns are now six and one in a tie for second in the conference standings. Tomorrow night at 10:30, K Texas Sports Sunday is your one-stop shop for tomorrow's sports stories and highlights, plus a full recap this week in Big Country High School football. Lindsey Cash and I are going to break down the brackets. Lindsey also has a great story of Wiley linebacker Jackson Bounds. We aired that earlier this week. We'll show you again tomorrow, so make sure you join us right after the news at 10. It's been a cool, windy night out here in Big Spring. Vintage West Texas high school football conditions. Uh, what a game it's been tonight. The Bulldogs and Fort Stockton came into this game with polar opposite records. 7-3 for Wiley, 3-7 for the Panthers. As we take a look at what went down, plenty of Bulldog fans made the drive out west. What an atmosphere it was as we take a look. So, Wiley, how would they start the game? That was the big question coming in. Whenever they get off to a good start, usually pretty successful. Now, opening kickoff, a little spark from Colby Awalt. 60-yard return down to the Panther 30, and the Bulldogs take full advantage of that great field position. Moments later, Hayden Lewis makes it look easy. 7-0 Wiley. And then ensuing kickoff, things continue to bounce the way of Wiley. Derek Ince's kick bounces inside the five, and then Fort Stockton recovers in their own end zone, and it ends up being a safety, so it's 9-0 Wiley before you knew it. Everything going Wiley's way off the bat. Now, the defense, how would they go from the beginning? Jackson Bounds and company suffocating that Panther offense, and then on fourth and short, Fort Stockton's Lucas Singh gets taken down by Blake Berry. It's 23-0 at the end of the first quarter. Now, second quarter we go. Play of the game right here, courtesy of our senior, Hayden Lewis. He sat out that regular season game against, or regular season finale against Sweetwater. Makes it look so easy. Muscles it in from 60 yards plus. 37-0 at half as we take a look at the final scoreboard. So the Wiley seniors sat out the second half and they kept it going 49 to three year final. Hugh Sanderford to say the least, a happy camper. We spoke with coach right after the game. Well, there you have it, folks. Hugh Sanford, a very happy head coach as they head back home, 49 to three year final. Mike, everything just seemingly went the Bulldogs away in that first half, your final. 49-3 to from here in Big Spring. Great way to start things off in by district as they head to the area round. That's right, Braid. Mary Noel, mother of two Wiley volleyball players, is now facing the battle of her life, breast cancer. And had she not made the choice to get her yearly mammogram, she might not have found out until it was too late. Mary Noel and her husband, Sam Korn, are watching their daughter, Shelby, starting the Barrow for Wiley High School Volleyball. They're dedicated parents that have been married now for 21 years. The color pink can be seen throughout Wiley's volleyball program as they support breast cancer awareness. Mary's life and perspective on that color changed dramatically this past August when she visited her doctor for a routine checkup. Went in for my yearly mammogram and um, the radiologist found something and went back in for a diagnostic mammogram and found that it um, did look like it was something suspicious so went in for a biopsy and um, they did find out that it was DCIS which is stage zero breast cancer. Mary's diagnosis sent shockwaves to her family on and off the volleyball court. She seemed to be in perfect health going into the checkup and had no cancer history of any kind in her family. When they told me in my heart just broke like it would for any of your kids because you're so close to them. When they hurt, you hurt. The volleyball team's been wonderful. We've just had more support than you can ever imagine. To be put in a bad situation, but to uh, 
obviously the support you have is, is pretty amazing. I have to be strong for my little sister and brave. And I can't show weakness even on tough days. It's really hard because um, we're all struggling with it. I'm thankful that the radiologists here found it early and that, um, that I went in. If I had not been doing my mammograms and waited, then it could have been much worse. Shelby, a senior at Wiley High School, and Emily, an eighth grader at Wiley Middle School, both play the position of libero, which wears the opposite color of their teammates. In a touching tribute, the volleyball team gave Mary a signed pink ball, and both of her daughters now wear pink jerseys in honor of their mother. The first time I walked in, my um, our younger one that's in eighth grade is also a libero, our daughter, and um, she was wearing the pink jersey as well, and it immediately brought tears to my eyes. It just meant a lot. And um, they're going through this with me, and I just want to be brave and be an example for them. And just, um, I just, I'm proud of them for whatever they do. Pink's a little different to me now. It's, uh, it means a lot. It's pretty special that both my daughters are wearing it in honor of their mother. If you could give advice to any woman out there that feels healthy, it feels like they don't have to get checked in every year, what would you say to them? I would just say, um, because you are healthy, just continue that. Go in for your yearly checkups with your doctors and, and do the mammograms, and it's not gonna hurt anything. It literally takes 15, 20 minutes. Mary is scheduled to have surgery tomorrow morning in the Metroplex. She's already made the trip down there. We send the best of luck to her in tomorrow's procedure. The National Cancer Institute recommends that women over 40 should get a mammogram at least one or every two years. If your family has a history of breast cancer, more visits are highly suggested. In Mary's case, going every year may have saved her life, Brad.